an actual prophecy that is being fulfilled right now in real time. So again, there is a strange prophecy in the Bible having to do with some red heifers, some red cows that are going to be sacrificed in Israel. And this sacrifice will commence the building of the third temple, which was not to be built until the coming of the Messiah. And some say will only be built when the Messiah has already been named on earth. I made another video about this that you can go check out. Um, that I'll put in the description below. But uh, yeah, let's get into this because this one is wild. But despite all the fanatical stuff going on, this is actual prophecy being lived out meticulously by the Jewish Orthodox in Israel. In a recent speech, a Hamas spokesman blamed the Jews for bringing red cows to the Holy Land. The cows he's talking about at a secure, undisclosed location are these, red heifers to be precise. Some Jews and Christians believe they're the key to rebuilding the historic Jewish temple in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. To understand, you have to go back nearly 2,000 years when the ancient Romans destroyed the last temple in the city. To rebuild it, these believers point to the Bible's Book of Numbers. It commands the Israelites to sacrifice a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Only then can the temple rise again. Caring for them on an Israeli settlement in the West Bank is Yitzhak Mamo. So we have here, uh, after a long research, we find in uh, Texas. In Texas? Uh, yeah, yeah, Texas, United States of America. Texas Red Angus, flying them 7,000 miles to Israel. This is not a publicity stunt. Well, what do you mean? Meaning, this is something you take very seriously. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not story. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. <laughs> I love that. The dude's just like, what do you mean? They say no Harry Potter shit, motherfucker. This is real life. This is the Bible, my guy. I love that, you know, and I know I deconstruct the Bible a lot and I just did in this video, but I love the Bible. And again, because I have this quantum view of it, man. And to me, obviously the Abrahamic faiths are highly misunderstood by most of the world and fanaticized by most of the world, but they still play a very important quantum role in the human history of things. And I do believe there is something to this Messiah history and this messiah return thing and it's not just localized or it's not just centralized to the old testament but it's something that is universal and will play out in this simulation um so yeah i i i love people who have a veracity or i love people who have a tenacity for their specific religion of course without the violence involved you know because um i believe in god i believe in christ um but he made me in a to be a very certain goofy and introspective person so to me i view it just in a very quantum way where it's not linear it's not narrow-minded where i only believe in this book i only believe in this religion no i see it all as this blending of human history that has unfolded from the beginning and has simply branched out in different ways but all of the branches come back to the root and that root is that we were all created by somebody something and that somebody, something who created us, um, and I'm not talking just about the Anunnaki, right? Let me be more specific here. I believe that there is a divine force that created everything, and from that emanated the gods. And we were even told that in the Bible, the sons of God. So I believe the first um, humanoids that were created were the Anunnaki, and I do believe that they played a role in our physical uh, creation. They're not our God. They're not our gods. They are our brothers and sisters who were the first to genetically tinker with life. And then we came from that. And then from that unfolded the Abrahamic faith. So there's this complex history of us, the Anunnaki, the sons of God, and then our true creator, right? And it's all unfolding. And through that, the true spiritual masters were born, such as Yeshua Christ, 
who really understood the quantumness of life, the the multidimensionality of it, um, and came here to try to get us to understand that and and knew that we weren't going to get it, that we were going to have to go through a procession of trials and tribulations and set up signs and set up teachings for us as a human family to heed and learn so that we could eventually also upgrade and elevate to the point where we would be ready to receive in full God's power, God's presence, God's love, because we're not ready. We are not evolved at all to be ready for this. Again, I mean, what? Jesus is going to come back for who? For the TikTokers? For the politicians? For who? Who is God going to come back for? Honestly, uh, the only people I think he would really want to come back for is all of our grandmas and grandpas. They're probably the only people who really, really um, are worth saving, you know, or taking to heaven. Everybody else is fucked. Everybody I've met is fucked. But um, but then again, you know, Jesus loves us like that, you know. So uh, anyways, man, uh, this is this is insane. You know, this is I get excited about this stuff because. These people really, really believe in what their Bible says and really, really believe in prophecy. And hey, man, like, I, I'm down to believe too. I want to believe, you know what I mean? But it's just the nature of my work just leads me always to human error, human um, f fanaticism, exaggeration, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, man, hope I'm not being too heady. Anyways, let's watch the rest of this. There's a few more minutes of this, and then we're going to wrap up this video. Massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. But something else now stands in its place. The Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, among the holiest sites in Islam. Today, only Muslims are allowed inside, but that's not stopping Jewish activists outside. Once you got, you started here. Six days a week, Melissa Jane Kronfeld leads groups from around the world who defiantly pray, as close as armed guards permit. It's not about the destruction of Islamic holy sites. It's about preserving this place and being guardians over the house of God for all people. So you're happy with it where it is? No, it's going to go 100%, but I believe it's, gonna it, go. it's 100%. Yeah, the whole thing is going to go. We have to build a temple. When you say that Dome of the Rock has to go, MJ, it's hard for me to imagine something more incendiary. Well, let me ask you something. The Middle East seems pretty destabilized right now, and the war, if I'm not mistaken, is already here. To be clear, hers is a dream not shared by the Israeli government or by the vast majority of Israelis and Jews, but it's been enough to incite numerous Islamist groups. Hamas has dubbed its October 7 assault on Israel the Al-Aqsa wave and has the Dome of the Rock on its emblem. But this is sacred ground to billions of Muslims globally, not just Hamas terrorists, stresses Imam Mustafa Abu Sway of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims. So you'll find reaction from Indonesia to Toronto to New York. That's really given. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims, and the Muslims today are two billion people. Two billion people. Simply by performing these acts, are are these Jewish activists kicking a hornet's nest? They are. They are. A hornet's nest. They're kicking all the way to Capitol Hill. So good to see you here in the nation's capital. Those sacred cows were showcased in Washington at a recent prayer gathering. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. We need the Messiah to come, right? So for me, the red heifer, it's red for the blood of Jesus Christ. Back in the West Bank, Mamo says the ceremony could take place any day. But can you understand why Hamas could be outraged by something like this. I cannot understand that even if they are right, why they have to slot and uh, rape people to win their war. Terrorists have been attacking us before we ever dreamed of these cows, he reflects. They don't need them as an excuse to kill. I mean, what the heck, dude? 
So these red heifers are being planned to be sacrificed any day now this year. And the Jewish elite and also the Christians who back Israel and the Messianic prophecy want this to happen so that they can usher in the war against Christianity and Islam and take back the Dome of the Rock so that the Messiah can return. This is calamitous. And again, it's playing into this narrative of we need to fight this holy war. This has been going on forever, man. And the fact that we got people on both sides ready to die for this is just calamitous, man. It is tense and in my mind, unnecessary. Again, because it all comes from the Anunnaki, man. I mean, like... There's only one God, right? There's only one God. There aren't all these different gods, right? There's only, there's only one creator. We are all the creator's children. And yet here we're fighting over all of these. We're fighting over a rock, brother and sister, literally over a fucking rock. It's straining, man, you know? And look, I'm nobody to say what needs to happen in order for the Messiah to come. Obviously the, the Bible has its requirements. The Quran has its requirements and then the rest of the world just has to watch it all unfold. But it's just it's just wild, man, you know, and I, I deem myself just uh, I, I deem myself as just a child of God, man. You know, I, I adhere more to Christianity and the ways of Christ, um, you know, but I wouldn't even say Christianity. I would say I'm just more of the way of Christ and I'm working on a book right now about Christians and the early Christians and the true origins of Christianity. And, and they never called themselves Christians either. I mean, that's whatever, you know, it's trivial, but they called themselves um, those of the way. That's one of the terms they used, those of the way. And um, so, yeah, man, it's just, it's just wild, you know, because you got all this stuff going on and it's culminating towards this election i keep saying that but because it is you know and and these elections are always very uh, tense and and they um, cause frenzies and they they make people go a bit crazy you know and so i feel like the collective conscious of the world right now the collective consciousness is very tense and everybody's so agitated and expecting something huge to happen and i think because we expect it we kind of call it in and we cause people to freak out you know it's kind of like you know what they say if you're you know if you're at work and you're you're freaking out you know you're gonna cause an accident you know so you gotta be calm i feel like we're just wanting the world to end i feel like people are just so exhausted so tired so beaten down and abused they just want it all to end they just need it to end you know we just there's so much fighting bro there's just so much fighting it's like no i want this rock no you can't have the rock it's my rock it's like fucking a man all of this for what for what man you know that's why I just pray to God, man. I give, I pray to God every day, not even for myself, dude. I pray to God every day in thanks. I give thanks to God and I also pray for you. I pray for the world and I hope everybody has a great time while they're here. I don't know, man. Will I go to hell? I don't know. Will I, will anything happen to me after this life? I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I just hope that God has a plan for me and I hope that I'm in tune with that plan and I just know that God doesn't make mistakes and he, he must have made me the way he made me for a reason you know I don't I'm not an atheist but I'm not an atheist at all but I don't know sometimes I feel like I'm heretical you know sometimes I feel like I'm blasphemous but the truth is I love God and I'm, and I and I praise God and I thank God you know, but I'm also a sinful person, you know, and, and I don't adhere to any specific religion. Yeah, it's, it's just wild, man. We're living in wild times. And as we can see, some of these people really, really believe that this is it. This is it. What's going to happen, man? I mean, when those heifers are sacrificed, these people are not going to let up. The Christians, the Jews they are going to provoke a war 
between themselves and the Muslim world so that they can recapture the Dome of the Rock. I mean, they need it. They need it. So it's almost like the Anunnaki, the Abrahamic faiths were set up for this war to happen. I mean, it's, it's got to happen one of these days. I mean, it'd be amazing. It would be amazing, a miracle if it could happen by way of peace. Imagine that. Imagine if both Muslims, Jews and Christians, all three of them, realized that they were actually brothers and sisters worshiping the same God under different names and under different perceptions and just said, you know what, fuck it, let's all chill on this motherfucking rock together. But no, no, it's got to be war. It's got to be Armageddon. It's got to be murder. Always, always, always. And it's just so pathetic. But if that's what God wants, man, I guess that's what we have to do, right?